Before we continue picking apart this lambda expression, I actually want to define what an expression is. I had this professor in college who it seems like he said over and over again, all the time, an expression is something that returns in place of itself a value. All right, he said it in that monotone voice a hundred times. An expression is something that returns in place of itself a value. And there was actually some good reason for him to say that to us a thousand times. He really wanted to drill in our heads that an expression returned a value, which, which seems so straightforward, and it actually is, but for some reason we tend to block our brain on it. Let me just grab i greater than 5 that we have up here. How many expressions do you see in what I've just circled here? Pause the video and count them for me, and then, and then come back. No, I told you to pause the video. Pause the video. Okay. All right. Hopefully you said three. All right. If if you're not comfortable if with expressions or you're new to them, you probably said one because this kind of looks like an expression, this greater than symbol. But there's actually three expressions. There's five here. Okay. If I just say five in my code, that's a value, is it not? It's an expression that returns in place of itself a value, and that value is Five and five has meaning to us. If I give you five, that's a good start to a good lunch, probably. Anyway, five is an expression. I is an expression. All right, we saw in previous videos I passed in a three for I, I passed in an eight for I. I is an expression by itself, it returns a value. And, and the value can vary, it's not constant like this five, the value can vary, but it's still an expression. So I is an expression as well. Let me just clear the board here a little bit. All right, so we have 5 is an expression, i is an expression, and then the the greater than symbol is also an expression as well. It's, it's an operator that takes two arguments, has to take a left expression and a right expression, and then it compares those two values returned by those expressions, and in place of itself it will return a value as well, and that value is either true or false, but it's still a value. Okay, the, the data type for i is an int, the data type for 5 is an int, but in this case we're returning a boolean, but it's still true or false, it is a value. All right, now in compiler theory we like to take these expressions and build them into trees, so let's just do that. I'm going to take 5, it is, it is a, an expression, I'll put it in this node here, and then I'll take i, and I'll put it in a node here as well, and, and then I'll connect these two with a binary expression, a binary expression, which is greater than, and all of a sudden I have a tree. If I took your computer monitor and flipped it upside down, you would see this is kind of a tree. We like to grow our trees downwards in computer science. But you can see I have a tree here, and I definitely have three expressions. And we can evaluate this expression tree. Let's just do that. Let's say I pass in a, a 3 for i. Well, then i will yield the value 3. Okay, let's just replace that with a 3 here. And then the 5, well, it's going to yield the value 5, right? So here we go. Here's 5. Here's the actual value re returned by both of our expressions. The greater than takes both of them. 3 greater than 5? Well, no. And it disappears. And guess what it does? It returns in place of itself a value. 3 greater than 5? No. So that is false. There is our value. So... Oh, false, I should spell it right. So you saw the 3 disappear, it returned a value, or the i disappear, it returned a value of 3, the 5 disappeared, it returned a value of 5, and then the greater than, it disappeared, it consumed its left operand, its right operand, and returned in place of itself this value of false. So hopefully you're getting the idea that, oh, expressions return in place of themselves a value. Now going back to a little bit of compiler theory, there are two main things we worry about when parsing a file as a compiler. We worry about expressions and we also worry about statements. Statements do not return values. There's generally statements end in semicolons, but for loops are statements. Okay, while loops, ifs, they're all statements. They don't return in place of themselves a value, but they're still statements. Okay, this is a statement where I take this expression here and I assign it to test and, and yet it's still a, 
a statement you can notice here. Some not all some statements are expressions. I'm not going to get into that in this video. I do in another video, but so on and so forth. So hopefully you're getting the idea that hey, expressions aren't that bad. We have a very simple expression here. We could obviously make this more complicated if I said new random dot next, then all of a sudden how many expressions are in are in what I've just highlighted here and I'm not gonna get into that now, but hopefully you're catching on to what expressions are and then we can further pick apart this lambda expression. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Lambda expression. Okay, we've just called them lambda expressions from here on out. and Or before this video, I've called them lambda expressions. And now the word expression should have meaning to you. Lambda expression. Anyway, I'm going to pick this apart further and, and see if we can fully get into, into the objects on the heap. And, and just like we were doing in the previous video. I'm rambling.